This lesson is entitled Visioning the Future, a look into the world to come. And what I intend to do here is to explain to you why you are now studying things about population and about sample. Let's start with a population of my favorite creatures, the albino Hungarian banded aardvarks. Of course, this population has a, a mean of mu, a standard deviation of sigma, and then, of course, the variance is simply the square of the standard deviation. And then, of course, there are number n. We have no idea how many of these aardvarks there might be. So what we will do to this population is that from the population, we will randomly select a sample. Now, remember that a random means that each little aardvark had an equal possibility of being selected. Random sampling is easy to talk about, but very difficult to perform. We now have a sample of albino Hungarian banded aardvarks. The sample has X bar, has a mean of X bar. The sample has a standard deviation of S. And of course, if we have S, we have variance of S squared. And then we have N, which is the number in the sample. Now, while we might not know the number kappa N in the population, we will know the number that we have sampled. A sample of albino Hungarian banded aardvarks. Once more, the sample has mean of X bar, standard deviation of S, it has variance, and we know the number in the sample. Now, the sample was taken from the population, and the population has mean mu, standard deviation sigma, variance sigma squared, and there's some number in the population. We know the variables for the sample, but we do not yet really know the variables for the population. Now, we might use X bar in the sample to predict mu. We might use S in the sample to predict sigma. And of course, if S predicts sigma, then S squared predicts sigma squared. And But N, the number in the sample, will have bearing upon all of the predictions that we make about the population. A very small sample has a lot of probability of making a mistake. The bigger the sample, the better the prediction. Now, these X bar S, S squares, and Ns are descriptive statistics. And mu, S, sigma, sigma squared, and kappa N are descriptive statistics. Our desire is to move towards inferential statistics, in which we take a sample of albino Hungarian banded aardvarks. We take a sample of size N, and we use X bar, and S, and, and of course S squared, to predict the mu of the population, the standard deviation of the population, and the variance of the population. This is pretty interesting, isn't it? If you would allow me just a moment to give you a little further glimpse into the future in regard to climbing Waller's Ladder. You started out in this course and you had to learn some terms and concepts. If you're going to live in the land of nerd, you have to know how to speak the language. We're moving up to, in this last lesson, to understand the normal distribution curve. These are still fundamental definitions, terms, ideas that you need in order to really use statistics. Next module, we'll study the binomial distribution, still into terms, understanding what we're trying to do, laying a foundation so that you can glimpse the real world. Once you have mastered these three steps, you will move into the world of confidence intervals. And from confidence intervals, we will begin to do what is called inferential statistics. We will begin to understand that we can take a sample, develop a confidence interval, and infer something about the population. The really great point will be when we begin hypothesis testing. For from there forward up the ladder, we will be doing inferential statistics and really having a good time. Friends, this stuff is the nectar of the gods, and I am so glad that you're here. Look forward not just to mastering this course, but look forward to mastering your degree and walk in that stage and listen to that beautiful graduation music called Pomp and Circumstance. Mm -hmm.